It's the beginning of the month, so you know what time it is. It is time for my monthly weigh-in update. I'm gonna give you a scale update, how my diet and my exercise has been going, how I've been doing with the holidays, cheating, splurging, weight gains, the scale, all of it. We're gonna talk about how to get through the holidays. This is gonna be a jam-packed video. So if you wanna know what's going on and if you are looking for some maybe guidance to get through the holidays without packing on the pounds, then this video is for you. Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Danielle. This is Daniela Diaries and happy Vlogmas. So if you guys are new, welcome. I hope you would stick around and subscribe. Um, we have a new video in either short form or long form. So either in the form of shorts or in the form of a long form video every day until December 21st. That's how we do Vlogmas over here. So stay tuned because every day you will see a video for me until the 21st. So with all that being said, let's talk about weighing in. How did the holidays go for me as far as Thanksgiving and how were they going for me as of yet? So last month when we weighed in, I want to say I was 168 pounds. Um, that's kind of where I was at the beginning of November. And where am I now? So we're going to go back a little bit and we're going to talk about Thanksgiving and kind of how November went. November was very busy. Um, we had my sister's birthday. I had three Thanksgivings to go to, like three days in a row. It's his life, right? And I had made the decision that I was not going to bring meal prep to not one single event because this is a lifestyle, right? I don't, I'm not training for a show, you know, I'm not jumping on stage in a month. This is, I'm training for life, right, so to speak. And I knew that I just didn't want to do that. I feel like I'm finally at a place where I'm, I'm good with food, that I can be at that place and be comfortable with it. So I ate, and I, girl, I ate good, I ate real good. But I want to say this as well, I didn't just go off plan for three days. Um, I ate my regular meals, you know, I had my breakfast, whatever, just for my last meal of the day, or, you know, my last, you, I'm going to be honest with you, it was probably less, I usually have six meals, so it was basically meal like four, five, and six, because we were gone most of the night, you know. Um, I ate what everybody else was eating, you know. Um, I didn't, I also want to say this, I don't think that I can go overboard with food as much anymore, just because my body physically can't allow it. Um, I don't have that big of an appetite. My stomach isn't stretched out the way it was before. So it's used to smaller portions. So that's kind of what I do. I don't eat to the point of discomfort anymore. I don't eat to the point where I feel like I'm going to throw up. I don't feel like I have to because nothing is off limits. Now back in my keto days, honey, I was binging. When I was going off, honey, I was going off and I was just eating until, you know, I was on the verge of vomiting. And we're not doing that anymore. So I feel very comfortable with this way, right? So, um, yeah, I, I ate, I had desserts, I had meals, I was fine. Um, when I weighed in, I'm just gonna tell you what I weighed in. So my first weigh in was December 1st. I was 165 pounds. So I lost two pounds in November. Um, do I plan on losing any more weight? No, um, I think I'm okay. I'm feeling, um, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel, uh, it, I, I've been bigger, right? I've been big. And I can say that I was very big. I was very, I was morbidly obese. Um, I know that a lot of people see, uh, what they want to see on here. Um, but you know, when I, when I started this routine, so it'd be 10 years that I've been struggling with getting weight off. Okay. My daughter, my youngest daughter will be 10, um, this coming weekend. And I started when she was like eight, 12 weeks old, something like that. Um, and I've been going for it. So when I first started after Becky, I was not like right after like pregnancy weight, like after, you know, the smoke settles, uh, 12 weeks, I was 286 pounds. So, you know, I was size 18, 20. And I kind of was able to, my comfort weight was about 250. So 16 for me. Um, I'm down right now to about a 910. Some jeans. I don't know. I tried a pair of jeans of Express the other day. They were small as hell. I don't know what's going on there, but, um, you know, around eight or 10. That's kind of where I'm at. So, um, I've noticed that I, I, some parts of my body don't hold a lot of weight, mostly here. 
so I feel like this pops out kind of a lot you know and I am like oh you know or I could see a lot of like the veins and the tendons in my neck and I feel like my neck looks real like stringy so I don't really want and I'm always like putting my hair down because I feel like I look kind of gaunt a little bit um I notice it a lot in my face too where you know I've lost a lot of volume especially now that I'm getting older I'm gonna be 40 next month um I feel very gaunt in my face and I could put filler and stuff back in my skin you know um but you know just these are the things that you can't control where the weight leaves right so like my arms are pretty tiny but I still have a bulk of my weight in the bottom um so I was talking to my coach I still have a coach um and she's like what do you want to do and I was like you know we have we're going to do a cut for my birthday and she's like I think where you're at right now is is perfect and I was like I agree so she's like well how about we do a little bit of a reverse right now and try to get you back at 170 and have you put on a little bit more muscle mass and I was like that sounds good I think I like 170 for me I am almost five foot seven and I feel like I look healthier at that weight you know I've never wanted to be I think a lot of people go into a weight loss and say like I want to be skinny um and you want to hit a, a number I remember I always wanted to be 165 and now that I'm here I'm like mm, I think 170 is good so I think I like to sit at like 170 170 two three something like that and be comfortable with a little bit fuller parts you know fill in a little bit you know um, a lot of my weight will still go to my like my legs and my butt but Leo likes it like that but yeah so I feel like that's just like I, I know there's gonna be some, my when I say that to like other people and I'm like I just feel like I look too skinny oh really you look too skinny I know it's like woe is me right first world problems but it happens I think this is something that a lot of people don't talk about on your weight loss you're I'm telling you guys this, and I know you're going to think I'm blowing smoke up your ass, but you're not always going to be on a weight loss journey. You're not always going to be chasing a number. Eventually, you're going to hit that number, and you're going to be like, okay, I'm here. Now what? And that's kind of where I found myself, like, all right, I'm here. I've made it. I made my goal weight. I made it. What am I going to do? And now I'm like, okay, well, I think I like it a little bit. I like being a little bit fuller. So let's put on like five pounds. Um, so what has changed for my dieting? Not much really. We're just increasing the calories. Um, I get two treat meals a week. Uh, we've cut down my cardio. And um, yeah, I mean, it's been good. My metab I think a lot of people don't address metabolic insufficiency and the damage that we have done to our metabolism by yo-yo dieting it is absolutely asinine to me um that that's never talked about and the promoting of basically metabolic destruction because i've done it i promoted it but i didn't know you know so here i am i know now um if you are struggling with weight loss and you know you've checked your hormones you checked your thyroid um, everything else is copacetic, like your health, um, your underlying conditions are, are smooth. You know, if you have a thyroid issue, it's going to be hard for you to lose weight. I have clients who have thyroid issues and we, we talk about this. It's going to be hard. Um, also, there's going to be a lot of things that you're, you need to might have to eliminate from your diet, you know, because sometimes your weight, it's not necessarily pounds, but inflammation, you know, you could be eating something that is causing such a severe inflammatory response. For me, dairy, nightshades, these things, um, a lot of uh, gummies, I can't have anything with like gelatin in it. It causes a severe inflammatory response. I get bloated. I retain it. You know, it's your body doesn't like everything, right? So you have to, I always really suggest you guys doing a food sensitivity test the beginning of the year coming and this whole diet, you know, the beginning of the year, everybody's on a diet, you know, um, resolutions and all that, it's going to be on sale. Make that a Christmas gift to yourself because you would be surprised at how much better you feel when you eliminate something that your body doesn't like. Your joints are going to feel better. Your skin's going to look better. Your gut's going to feel better. You're going to be pooping better, sleeping better, feeling better, looking better. It's just going to be uh, it's going to be an all over improvement of life. So I highly recommend doing that. It's really going to change the game for you. Stop dragging your feet on it because literally even with people I work with, I'm like, okay, well, what are you eating? 
there's no reason why the scale shouldn't be moving because we're doing everything we need to. We're not going to, you know, so what are we eating? Eliminate this. Take this out. You know, cottage, like a lot of people do like a ton of cottage cheese. You don't need that much dairy. I know you need some dairy, right? We need it for vitamins and stuff like that. But you don't need to do, you know, a, a, a ton of, of cottage cheese just to hit a protein goal. You know what I mean? Eat some chicken, something like that, you know? So I highly recommend doing that because once I eliminated those food groups, I've I already seen a change, right? Um, and I made things simple. The simpler, the better. The simpler, the better. Um, meal planning, just keeping your macro super simple, keeping your protein super simple, keeping your carbs super simple. Not everything has to be a culinary masterpiece. You know, yeah, maybe you're not going to eat the same meal you're making for your family, but who cares? Like, I don't, I don't understand why that's such a big deal for a lot of people. Like, oh, well, I got to cook two meals. Who cares? And that's not necessarily you don't have to cook two meals. You can meal prep, you know, on Sunday and have your meals for the whole week and just cook for your family and just throw your stuff in a pan and heat it up or in the microwave, however you want to do it. And you're good to go and you can sit and eat with your family. You know, I eat six meals a day, right? So I'll have like extra meals in between the times that my family eats. They don't care. You know, they're, they're doing their own thing. Like, you know, I still sit down and eat dinner with my family every night. So it's bothering you more than it should. Um, same thing goes with like trying to make everything. Oh, I want to try this recipe. I want when you start doing all these creative ass recipes, I don't care how on point you are. If you are just starting your diet and you are still struggling with losing weight, your macros are, it, you're never going to get them precise when you're making like these casseroles and smorgasbords and stuff like that. And you're like, all right, let me do all this mathematic equations. And my serving size is like 350 grams, but that's just a guesstimate. You know, and then you're putting all this other stuff in there that you don't know if it's causing inflammation to you or not. That's why I'm just telling you guys, keep things simple. It could still be good. It could still be delicious. It just simplifies things. And when you keep things that simple, your grocery bill is going to be a lot better because all those other bits and bobs, they really, you know, they really pack on the punch when it comes to the bill, right? So that's my little bit of advice to get through December. You know, I know that we got holiday parties, Christmas parties, work parties, friend parties, Christmas, New Year's, Hanukkah. We have everything going on this month, right? And Kwanzaa, it's, you know, so there's a lot of stuff going on. And these are very big things with our family. And there has been times in my past where I dreaded it. I wouldn't eat. I would bring my own food. Um, I'm not even going to lie. I, sometimes I would bring my own food during the summer because I would go to my mom's house like every day. You know, so every day I'm not going to eat off plan because I'm going to take my kids swimming. So those occasions I would always bring, you know, my food and stuff like that. But when it comes to, you know, holiday parties and stuff like that, you know, you know, on Saturday you're going to go out and you're going to have a, an out dinner. So make sure that you are consistent the other six days of the week. That one meal on one day of the week is not going to kill you. I'm, I'm just being honest. Making sure that you're consistent is what's going to keep you ahead of the game here. Making sure you're still moving your body. If you're saying on Saturday you're going to have some pizza, some bread, this and that, honey, make sure when you get up on Sunday you hit that gym, you do some legs, and you use those extra carbs for energy so it goes right to the booty. That's what I do every time. When I had my, I, we had Thanksgiving, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Wednesday was my off day. Thursday I went to the gym with my dad. It was glutes day, baby. I used those carbs. It's Friday, I went ahead and I was a back day, made it another big muscle group day, used those carbs. Saturday, another big muscle day, I went ahead and did a full body workout and just spread them out. You know, utilize those carbs for good. Don't be sick about it. Don't go off kilter with it. Don't make December a cheat month. You could still enjoy life and do it in, a, in moderation. I mean, I'm not trying to be cold or insensitive, but we're adults. Okay, it's, it, I don't feel like I should have to tell you, like, you can't drink every day in December, right? Just because it's December and it's known for parties, I don't want to see you schnockered for the next 25 days, you know? So the same thing goes with eating. Just because you're eating or just because it's a celebratory month and there's lots of occasions doesn't mean you have to, you know, go balls to the wall with your food for 25 days, you know? Same thing goes with, like, baking, right? I like baking. I'm going to do a bunch of baking, and I know a lot of us like to taste our treats, I don't. 
I have my friends, family, whoever's here, try them. Hey, is it good? Because that's a slippery slope for me. I don't even try it because I know that once I go down that hill, there is no coming back. So if you know that if you start taste testing all the little bits and bobs and then it's just going to be a spiral, don't do it. You're an adult. You're a, an adult. I, I feel like, you know, everybody wants uh, this magic solution. Like, what, what did you do? I stopped making excuses for my bad behaviors or, you know, my inappropriate relationships with food. I got therapy because guess what? I have food issues. You know, if food's a trigger for you, no diet or exercise plan is going to fix that. If somebody by, you know, putting you on a routine and you, you know, feel the limitation is causing you to binge, therapy, 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 because it will help. It helped me. It will help you. Are you going to be 100% healed? No, I still struggle. I still have body dysmorphia. I still have poor thoughts about food. And, you know, sometimes when I'm eating something, I'm like, damn, I'm going to look in the mirror and all that work I just did is going to be gone. And I'm going to be right back to, you know, 205 where I started. But then I remember that's not going to happen. Because it wasn't one meal that got me to 205, and it's not going to be skipping one meal that's going to get me away from 205. And it wasn't that one meal I skipped that got me down, okay? It was months and days and weeks and hours that all rolled into one because I stayed consistent and I made the best choices possible. Um, I feel like that's the big key about weight loss is consistency. It's about knowing that not everything's going to happen overnight. I know a lot of people want to see a 30 pound weight loss because they've seen Joe Schmo on Instagram and they just look, if somebody has lost 30 pounds in one month, I can guarantee you that they have an extreme amount of weight to lose. If I were to lose 30 pounds in one month, there would be a serious, serious issue with my health. If I'm dropping 30 pounds in one month and I'm down to 130 pounds, I need to be admitted into the hospital and there needs to be some serious extensive testing done on me and some scans and I need the whole workup because there is something wrong. Now, if I was 300 pounds and I were 400 pounds and I lost 30 pounds in a month, it's because I have over 200 pounds probably to lose or 150 pounds to lose and it's the first time you're ever in a deficit, right? So stop comparing your life to somebody you see on Instagram. Instagram, TikTok, they're highlight reels. Okay, and I'm gonna be honest with you, a lot of these people are not completely honest with how they're losing their weight. A lot of these people are, are buying these, you know, weight loss helpers, you know, black market, you know, I know people who are doing, I know people who are selling them, you know, they're getting them from, look, regardless. People buy them and they sell them because it's a hot commodity right now, right? So be mindful of that. And worry about what's on your plate. Worry about what's in front of you. Worry about yourself and not what anybody else is doing. Because the more you're watching, the more you're idolizing, the more you're envious of what they're doing, the less you're showing gratitude for your own successes. And you are doing amazing. That's all you need to remember for the month of December is you're doing amazing. Stay consistent. You know, if you're, like I said, if you have a party, plan for the party. Not every day is a party. Like I said, not every day you're boozing it up. Not every day you're going to be putting yourself in a food coma. You know, we have to be adults and make adult decisions and know that, you know, you know, we, we don't have to eat. And just say you do have three or four parties in a row, right? Say you have a party Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Those days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, what are we doing? We're making sure that all the meals except for that one are planned, right? We're making sure Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're hitting the gym. We're not punishing ourselves with cardio, but we're moving our body. We're staying consistent with our routines. And if we have a meal, you know what? Maybe not every meal has to be, you know, pizza and beer. Maybe you're going to go out and say, hey, you know what? Tomorrow we're going to go to this pizza place. I really love that place today. Uh, you know what? Let me get um, the baked salmon, a vegetable, and a side salad or something like that. Make a healthier choice that you're there with. Not every day has to be a gluttonous outing either. You know what I mean? You just pick your battles. You could do it. You know you could do it. Just like if you had your kid with you and they're like, hey, they had pizza twice this week, you're going to get something else. You know, treat yourself the same way. You know, I feel like we, we use food as a reward and it's like, oh, okay, well, it's fine. We're, you know, we're out. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. You can make good choices while you're out eating as well. It doesn't always have to be you know, that if you're a cocktail person, maybe, 
you know, switch up the beer for, you know, kind of a hard liquor, you know, maybe a cranberry and vodka. I don't know. I'm not a big drinker, but I do know that beer will blow you. Also, be wary of sugary drinks because those are what's going to cause that hangover and they are going to pack on the Bell Bees too. So hopefully this kind of gives you some ideas. Uh, I'm going to insert some pictures of where I was at the beginning of the month into where I am now or where I was November 1st, where I am now. Very slight difference, but I feel good. And we're going to keep moving forward. How are you guys? You guys excited for Christmas? You guys enjoying Vlogmas? Let me know down below. We'll see y'all in the next one. Bye, friends!